Hello and welcome to the Monday, February 26, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Did he finally found a solution for a problem that we have been chasing for almost two years and that's scans that contain the string MGL and DD. These scans were not obviously malicious. There was no obvious purpose of this string. It, for example, showed up as an HTTP method, which of course is not defined and typically not causing anything to happen. Well, thanks to a reader, uh, Mikhail Solitsik, uh, for reaching out. Mikhail did actually record a video about a tool that is uh, created by RIPE, the European Network Agency. It's a little bit sort of uh, like our DShield honeypots, but uh, what they're distributing is what they're calling RIPE Atlas. It's a little... Uh, computer, uh, sort of Raspberry Pi-like, it's actually a little bit smaller, uh, that you can connect to your network and then they and the researchers are able to use it to basically run various network uh, tests to check internet responses, uh, internet response time and various other things. One of the tools installed on RIBE Atlas is Magellan and Magellan allows you to send packets uh, with uh, various protocols like uh, DNS, HTTP and such with, with that particular string MGL and DD identifying them as being originating from Magellan. This is, again, just sort of part of an internet measurement effort. It's not malicious, also sort of not really used as a port scan or things like, you know, we have uh, on Friday, I mentioned some of the other researchers, Shodan and the like, that really are looking for open ports. And Xavi brings us yet more malware. We always love malware, in particular if it's being analyzed by Xavier. And in this case, the new thing about this particular info stealer is how it detects whether or not it's running in a sandbox. It does check if a mouse is connected to the particular device that it's running on. And the assumption here is that, well, sandboxes sometimes don't bother with things like mice. The other interesting part here is it's not being done sort of as part of a binary executable, but a simple Windows bat script is being used here and then the WMIC binary in order to figure out if a mouse is connected. So a little bit sort of a living off the land technique here. And if you are using Salesforce and who doesn't, you may want to look at the blog by Baronis outlining some common vulnerabilities in Apex code. Apex is a Java-like programming language that's used with Salesforce in order to create customized applications. And Veronis in their blog post does outline some of the common pitfalls. For example, when you're defining a class using Apex, you can either do it as without sharing or with sharing, where with sharing is the safer way of doing it. It sort of respects the user's Privileges without sharing doesn't share privileges, so it actually does allow access to everything. On the other hand, of course, sometimes that's what you really need. You just have to be careful with how you apply it. They outline a number of other things and really uh, too much here to list it all in the podcast. So if you're dealing with Salesforce, I highly recommend that you take a look at that blog post. I'm talking about these big enterprise systems, uh, Watchtower Labs uh, has published a blog post with a proof of concept code, more details regarding two vulnerabilities in IBM's operational decision manager. These vulnerabilities lead to remote code execution. Very classic vulnerabilities, uh, one deserialization vulnerability, and then the other one, a JNDI injection of vulnerability, which are typical vulnerabilities for these kind of systems that have to deal with many complex objects as part of the custom code often used with these systems. And we have an interesting Linux kernel vulnerability that I didn't mention last week. It was released, I think, on the 20th. 
it's in the KTLS module. Interestingly, there is a TLS implementation inside the Linux kernel. TLS implementations are tricky, have had vulnerabilities in the past. By putting it in the kernel, of course, you then have an automatic arbitrary code execution vulnerability that may lead at least to privilege escalation, but could potentially then be used for remote code execution, depending on how that particular TLS module is used. Upgrades are available, so apply them from your respective distribution. They should come out soon if they haven't already been released. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.